Power delivery is key in any situation, whether that be high speed or technical. Now, the focus on power delivery, very few riders know a large part of it is your clutch control. A lot of guys are putting direct power with their throttle. We want to use all forms of control, throttle and clutch together to maximize efficiency, okay? So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you guys a couple very beginner clutch control drills with my main man Charles here. This is going to be a great starting point for you guys to understand if you need to improve on that clutch control. And as we move forward, we're going to implement some balance techniques that we worked on in the beginning. If you guys remember, we put out a video on how to static balance. You guys can check that out right here. And on top of that, we're going to add in a little bit of balance clutch control together with some cone drills. But first, what we're going to do is start on this incline. Very simply, our focus here is to roll back and forth on this incline without using our brakes. We are only using smooth power delivery to keep our machine rolling back and forth without stalling or spinning our tires. So I'm going to show you a quick example here. Nice and smooth, low power. You can hear my bike's down in the bottom. I want it lugging up and back down nice and smooth. As you can see there, it's not jerky. I'm rolling very consistently all the way up and all the way down without using my brakes, okay? Now, often I see guys climb a hill and they don't make it, they panic, and they grab their front brake. So if you feel right. yourself reaching for your front brake, you have a bad habit. Uh -oh. And this is a common thing. Your front brake doesn't work on an incline. This isn't the steepest incline, but I'll show you. If we have a little, min of, a little bit of backwards momentum and I grab the front brake, didn't do much, right? I had the clutch in, I grabbed the front brake, I just slid all the way down that. Again, if it was steeper, you'd be in real trouble, right? Yeah. So our focus here is to be able to use that power delivery smooth with throttle and clutch together to keep that bike in control as we roll back and forth. Charles, okay. let's see what you got, Doug. Okay, I'll give it a go. Perfect, nice low power. Ah, not bad. Pretty dialed. We saw a little bit of jerky. Oop, and we got a stall ski. And now I'm we're grabbing that I got some bad habits. So, so. everything came <laughs> out there, right? As soon as it matters, usually those bad habits are exposed, right? Yeah. And it feels uncomfortable to roll back, plain and simple. It's like, oh, no. what's happening? Getting comfortable with that and knowing that you have the ability to slow it down whenever you want with your throttle and clutch together, very smooth, is going to help you big time, especially when it matters, right? When you've got a cliff behind you and you need to stop. Oh, yeah. Much better to use your clutch and stop than grab your front brake and fall to your doom. Yes, you know I agree. So, a so, couple more times. Okay. Roll back and forth, hold a nice steady throttle. We're actuating movement with our clutch. So I'm holding steady here. And you can see all of my movement comes from my clutch. I'm not moving my hand. My throttle is staying in the same position, but I'm moving, using my clutch to initiate movement. Okay. Yeah. yeah, feel that. Starting small up. here, baby steps. Baby steps, I love it. Good job, Charles. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Turns out it's a little more challenging than most guys it think, is. right? It is. It's a lot harder. A little more steady on the throttle, a little extra. Nice, Charles. Look at that, and balance, too. Okay, now, that was perfect. I want you to roll all the way up and all the way back down right to here without stopping. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The whole way smooth. Everybody yep. should be trying the same thing with us. Go ahead. All right. Bad, <laughs> well, a little fast, yeah, not bad not a, though. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the next thing. Okay. What I want you to do is roll up and hold that bike in one position only using your clutch. Okay. okay, so I want you to roll up nice and smooth, hold that bike in one position. Then what we're going to do is switch between rear brake and clutch, okay? So this is a great way to find if we need to improve on feeling that friction zone. Everything I do in technical situations is about my finger being able to find that friction zone very easily and quickly every single time, right? So if I'm doing a double blip, I'm pulling in the clutch like three times. 
So I've pulled in the clutch a lot. I have literal dexterity with my finger. The better you get with that dexterity, the better off you're gonna be everywhere, okay? So this is a great way to kind of feel if we need to hone that in. So I'll, I'll show you the example. That's nice and smooth, we roll forward, low power. We're holding the bike in one position. I'm not using my brakes, I'm not using my front brake, nothing, right? We add the rear brake, clutch is in. My bike's idling, I'm still in one position, I slip, and I'm off the rear brake, I'm back to slipping. Now, the goal here is to be able to switch back and forth pretty quickly without moving, just like this, right? Quick slip, quick switch, without moving, without stalling, without struggling, without any hiccups. Okay, Let's see if we can do it. Not bad, Charles. Add the rear, clutch is in, good job. Slip the clutch. Not bad, we got a little movement there, so he's feeling that friction zone. Add the clutch, there you go, brother. Little bit of movement still. Overlap them a little more, Charles. There you go. All right, roll back down nice and smooth. Good job, dude. All the way to me. Not bad. A little better. So we can see there, there was a little bit of movement, but you were pretty dialed in. We did stall a couple times. <laughs> we could get a little better. We did see that we were grabbing that front brake. We wanna break that habit. We wanna use power delivery to slow our machine, not our brakes in this situation, especially if we're rolling backwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the movement there, that's just about finding that friction zone. You could see the speed in which I was able to transition from rear brake to clutch. That's yep. the goal. Immediately feeling that friction zone with that clutch, holding that bike in one position. Not bad though. Cool. Feeling good? Yeah, feeling right. good. Now you're gonna feel real bad. Uh-oh. Because we've got cone drills. Shoot. The beauty of cone drills is everybody, including I would bet a lot of you viewers, look at it and say, I could do that all day. You're gonna find out real quick, it's a lot harder than you think. So I'm gonna set up a straight line of cones and you're gonna weave through them, dog. Sounds good, let's do it. All right. We have got our cone drill here. This is the cone drill that you see in every style of motorcycle discipline, a cone weave, right? We've got cones set at about maybe five feet apart and we've got a weave in between each one. This is my favorite drill for balance, body position and clutch control all together. The big thing about this is most riders look at this and they say, I got that all day, right? And I've taught a lot of people in my private lessons and usually what I say to them is, if you can get through without knocking a cone over, missing a cone, stalling or dabbing, the lesson is free. But if you don't make it through, the lesson's double. Ooh, I think I got this. I mean, I like it, it. looks easy, but I uh, guess we'll see what happens. I like it. the confidence. So <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a quick example of how to do it. Nice and smooth here. I guess I'll start from the beginning. Lugging that bike. Nice and smooth. You notice I kind of uncouple in each direction. Leaning that bike to the left, leaning that bike to the right. Notice I lean it into my right knee, into my left knee. My right knee comes out. Nice and smooth, back and forth, controlled, balanced. You can hear very steady throttle, actuating that movement with my clutch. Now, what do you think, Charles? Put my money where my mouth is right now. All right, dude. First time, one take wonder right here. Show me how it's done. Good control so far already, I like what I see. Smooth. Oh, oh, no. oh my god. That's, That's double doggy do. dog. Man, you're racking up a tag, homeboy. This is gonna be a tough tab for you to pay. Every time you dab, it's double. That's double. <laughs> tough, I'm right? gonna be broke. Okay, real quick. For everyone, that is truly what I see everyone do. 
It's kind of a circus trick, but man oh man does it make you dialed with your throttle clutch control balance and body position. You can see me uncoupling smooth through these, these cones. I'm trying to keep that bike nice and steady. Now for you, you don't quite have the balance that I have yet, right? We worked on the balance, you guys saw. I mean, if you're following along with these episodes, you should be progressing along with my main man, Charles here. Now, of course, your balance isn't quite as good as mine. So we're gonna go a little bit faster. Okay. I want you to hold a steadier pace through that. Okay. If you're going so slow that you're fighting your balance, it's gonna be a, a much more of a struggle because you don't quite have the balance that I have, right? So mm -hmm. I want you to hold a nice steady pace through. The next thing I'm gonna say is straighten out the line that you're shooting for here, okay? So instead of going way out, each time, try and straighten out the line and get that rear tire as close as you can to each cone, okay? okay? And then one more tip. So we've got steady pace, smooth throttle. We wanna keep that bike moving. We're trying to straighten out that line and something that's gonna help you straight out that line is aim your front tire for right in front of the cone that's in front of you. Does that make sense? Yep. We're trying to get that front tire nice and close on each turn as close to the cone in front of you as you can. That's gonna allow your rear tire to clear and initiate each turn. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, dude. Show me that Come I'm on. a good teacher and get it. Remember that steady pace. Much better. Much better. Much better. Much better, they're tight. Come on, Doug. Come on, Doug, one more. Please, please. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good, Charles. That helped. Effort. That, that helped, helped a ton. Okay, yes. you missed the last one, but still, that was way better. Yes. Right? So you can see kind of what happens there is it, it slowly gets harder and harder and harder. It and does. it's not that the cones get tighter, it's because with that steady pace, you're kind of each time progressively making it harder and harder because you're kind of going a little faster. Yep. So each transition of turn allows you to go a little further forward than we would want, right? So this is why this drill is so key for honing in that balance skill. The slower you can go, the easier it's going to be to get through these cones. Like, you know, honestly, I could do these all day. In fact, I could tighten them up even more so to make it through and make it harder on myself. I can still get a good training session with cones. I love cones. I'm always preaching cone drills. You guys need to make sure you're doing cone drills. Honestly, that was awesome. So we've got clutch control on the hill. We've added a little bit of clutch control. How are you feeling, man? I'm feeling pretty good. I feel a lot better as I'm going throughout the day. But with that being said, I mean, for the average guy, do you want to start about five feet like you're saying, or do they want to start a little further? Great point. So for the average guy, I would say do it over six. Do it to the point where you can make it. And then you can slowly, you know, progressively make it harder and harder and harder. But the, the, if you're starting really tight, you're gonna realize it's very, very frustrating. This five, I'm, I'm saying they're about five foot. I never really measure it out, but I'm gonna guess about maybe five and a half. Not bad, like that's a pretty tight gap. If you guys wanna start at seven, you know, make it to the point where you can actually weave through and then slowly tighten them up as you go. Dude, I, I set them up tight for you, you did awesome. Thanks. You're pretty dialed on the bike, brother. Thanks. Not a bad rider it. at all. I'm telling you, I teach a lot of dudes, I would say you're on the above average side 100%. You heard it here first. <laughs> Hear that, Chase? <laughs> awesome so, job, dude. Thank you thanks. so much. So, and again, this is going to help with pretty much any type of riding, 100%. whether it's moto or 100%, all the way, dude. Yeah, hard getting enduro. into the hard enduro stuff, but not only that, the trail riding, the technical stuff, you know, the, the roots, the rocks, anything that you can do, if you're better balanced, better with your clutch, you're going to make it through a lot easier, man. Cool. All right, on, guys. Again. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys are following the IRC Moto YouTube channel. I break down this stuff all the time. I also do a lot of private lessons here in Utah. Make sure you sign up for one. I feel like my boy Charles here really uh, made some made some strides forward. Yeah. Even though you got to pay I, I triple. You're going to be rich dads. after this, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I love strides. it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, keep shredding, huh?